Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this matrix digital rain background effect using JavaScript and React. Let's begin. We start here with a blank folder. And the first thing we need to do is run create react app. And then we need to give this a name. So I don't know, matrix ray. And this is going to give us a nice template to start developing our react program with. So the create react app command has finished running. And let's see what it made us. It made us a directory called matrix rain. And if we see what's inside that, uh, it's basically just generated us like a basic template React app. And we can run this React app by going into that directory and then typing npm start, which should open it in our browser. Yep, and there we go. This is the basic React app that we just generated. So this rotating logo is cute and everything, but we don't need it. So let's go ahead and delete it. So let's go into our code, into the source file, and yeah, I think this is running from app.js. So, I mean, let's start by deleting the CSS because we, we don't need that. So CSS, but gone. And then, I don't know, empty this div. And we go back to Chrome. And yeah, now we have nothing. Now, let's go back into our code and add something meaningful. Okay, so we don't need this first line here because we're not using that logo anymore. And let's have this app return a custom component. So let's call this matrix rain. And this doesn't exist yet, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and create that file real quick. So I've made a very basic component that just returns the text test. And you can actually see here that I have a lint error. Now you may not be using linting as part of your development setup, but you definitely should be. I highly recommend it. It really helps to keep your code clean. But this particular lint error is complaining that we don't have a href attribute, which is okay. Like, because the text that we're making, we're not really going for accessibility here. So I'm just going to go ahead and disable this rule for this whole file. Cool. Now we have no lint errors. And now we need to go back into this app file and we actually need to import matrix rain now. So import matrix rain from matrix rain. Cool, and if we go to the browser, we should see some text. Yep, there we go, test. Instead of returning something useless here, let's go ahead and make this do something useful. So let's first make the black background, like just the full screen black screen. So we'll start by making a div, just an empty div for now. Um, and we'll apply some styling to this. So we want it to be full screen, so how can we do that? Well, we can give it position, fixed, um, and then assign it to like be on the top and the bottom and left and right at the same time. Maybe I didn't explain that well, but let me just write it out and you'll see what I mean. Cool. So this now should be full screen. Oh, but we need color on it. Right. So let's do background black and let's go check. Yep. A full black screen. So this will be the background for our rain. So just like we made a custom component for the background, let's make a custom component for the rain streams. So I think we're going to model each of the like different lines going down as one stream. So let's call this um, rain stream. And then I'll make a separate file for this. This basic component here just returns some text like before. And if we view this, well, we can't see it because the text is black and says so the background. It's in this corner. So let's um, give that some styling so we can actually see it. I've given it some style here and I'll explain to you what each line does. Um, so the first line is color. Like this is just like a nice green that I chose. And this um, writing mode makes it like these two lines will make it go downwards, which is basically each of our streams is actually just a word, but like sideways white space no wrap um this means like once our stream hits the bottom of the window we don't want it to form two streams we want it to just you know keep falling through the window user select none this just means that you can't highlight the word with your mouse so it's not really needed but it's nice if you click on the um website because then it won't turn blue like you won't get like the highlight background tag shadow this just gives it a little green shadow just makes it look a bit more glowy and font sizes, yeah, bigger font. 
And with this styling, it looks like this. I mean, it's getting there, but yeah, it definitely still needs a bit more work. I think something that you'll notice is the big gap between characters. So we can't actually fix this gap unless we apply style to each of the characters individually, which we can't do if it's one word. So we need to split the word up into characters. To split an A tag containing a word into multiple A tags for each character of the word, we can do the following. So start with just the string and then split the string over the empty string, which will give us an array of characters and then map that array of characters to an A tag containing the character, like so. If we view this in the browser, it should look the exact same because, yeah, we haven't changed the style yet. Now we can style each character individually. So I'm going to start by adding some negative margin to each character. And let's see what that looks like. See, the characters are now close together. Instead of using the word test, let's turn this into something a bit more meaningful. So if you recall in the movie, it kind of looks a bit like Japanese characters with some numbers thrown inside. Apparently the story is that this comes from a sushi recipe. Um, anyways, I found this font online called Matrix Font, and it basically substitutes like English A to Z, some numbers, and some special characters into like Japanese looking characters and numbers, which is exactly what we need. So we need to go and install this font um, into our CSS. Once you've downloaded the font and put it in the right folder, we then need to add something to the global CSS of our program. So do you remember in the original app.js file, it imported this app.css file, which we actually deleted the contents of. But now we need to define this font face selector to like say like, okay, we have a font and it's called matrix font and you can load it from this location. Then once we have this global font face defined, we can go back to our range stream and on this div style tag, we can put a font family, then we called it matrix font, I think. Now, if we go and see how this looks in the browser, yeah, so it's turned T-E-S-T -E into whatever the matrix font was doing with those characters. So for our range streams, let's generate random strings of text. But these strings can't be of any character. It can only be of characters that are used in the matrix font, which isn't all of them. So I went ahead and made this like a giant string of all the characters we can use. The reason there's two backslashes here is because like the backslash, you know, is an escape character. So you need to escape the escape character. Um, and then this variable now contains all the possible characters that we can choose from. So then when we generate a random stream, we just need to pick from here. The first thing we're going to do is write a helper function that is going to pick us a random character from the string. So let's call this get random character. And it doesn't need a parameter. And it's going to return a character of a random index from valid chars. So we can do that with the following. Okay, great. I hope you can see what this does. So we get a character at a certain index, and that index is chosen randomly from the length of the string. Now we need a function that gives us a random stream. And this function is going to use this random character function. But the question is, how long should our streams be? So before we even write this function, let's go ahead and define some more constants. So let's just say the stream should be at least 15 characters, but a maximum of 50 characters. And that way, if we put these constants at the top of the file, it will be a lot easier to edit later. And one more helper function before we begin. So we've decided that the stream should be at least 15 characters and a maximum of 50 characters. but we need to pick randomly between these two ranges. So let's write a function that helps us pick an integer in a certain range. I'm now going to write this generate random stream function, and then I'll explain to you exactly how it works. The first thing that we do is generate a new array with a random size, and this is going to be our stream size. So we're using the array constructor, and then we pass in integer, which defines the size of the array. And when we do that, we get an array, but it's empty. And because it's empty, we can't map over it. So before we map, we need to fill, which then converts all the empty slots with undefined. And then with all these undefineds, we go ahead and turn all the undefineds into random characters, which could be anything from this valid char string. 
And now if we go down here, instead of using test, we can now use a random stream. Get ran stream. And now let's see what that looks like. So yeah, it looks like a random stream of characters. And in this case, it's actually going out of the screen because it's too long. But if we refresh it, yeah, we get different random streams, which is good. That's what we aim to do. Next, we can add some styling to the stream. What I've done here is I've firstly I've pulled out stream as a constant so that we can refer to it later. And I've also pulled out index here in the map function. And what this allows us to do is we can check the index of the character within the stream. And we can say, okay, if the character is the last one in the stream, then make it white. Otherwise, leave it alone. And then for the opacity, we can check if the character is one of the first ones in the stream, aka if it's like near the top. And then if so, it gets more and more transparent. So it looks like it's fading away. And then the text shadow is similar to the color. If it's the last one in the stream, then we give it a white glow instead of the green one that it had before. And let's see what that looks like. Cool. Right now, the stream looks kind of boring. It's not going anywhere. So we can try to animate it falling downwards. And the way that we're going to do that is maybe kind of cheating. But essentially, we're just going to keep adding padding to this stream until it like reaches the bottom. So right now it has a padding of zero, like it starts at the top. And then every few milliseconds, we bump up the padding. So it looks like it's falling down. We can use the use state hook to create some state variables and initialize it to zero. So our top padding is initialized to zero. And actually, instead of padding, we're actually ended up using margin here because of some like CSS issues. Um, and then we give the stream a margin of this initial state, which is zero. And then over time, we're going to add to this top padding. We're going to increase it, which is going to make the stream fall downwards. If you know JavaScript well, you might think that we can use the set interval function here. And then just, you know, every 100 milliseconds, we just add some top padding and then the animation will fall downwards. But the problem with that is that every time this component re-renders, you're going to set a new interval and it's just going to completely glitch out. So to solve that, there's a use interval hook exists. And this use interval hook isn't anything crazy. I'm pretty sure it just uses like a use ref and a use effect. Um, but basically it allows us to set an interval that doesn't really change when the component re-renders. Not unless we want it to. I've added a use interval hook here and it should be fairly readable what it does. Every 100 milliseconds it adds top padding. And let's go and see how that looks. And so the reason it's black is because it probably already rendered and fell off the screen. So let's refresh. And yeah, you can see that it loads and we just, we're adding all this margin, right? But <laughs> we never reset it. So it's just going to like fall infinitely off the screen. To fix this, we want to reset the margin once it's greater than the height of the screen. So let's go ahead and add that logic to this hook here. And let's see what this looks like now. You might have noticed that the stream is starting from the top of the page, but it's the tail of the stream that's starting from the top. So actually, if we want the head to start at the top, we need to initialize it with some negative margin. I just realized that I never explained where we got this number 44 from. And sorry, but this is a magic number that I came up with after trial and error. But I'm pretty sure this is the height of characters once we've applied the negative margin styling to them. And what this basically ends up doing is that at each interval tick, when we add padding, the stream drops by the height of one character which is going to lead us to have like a nice matrix effect that you'll see later. The initial margin that we start the stream with depends on the length of the stream, because if the stream is longer, it needs to have a more negative margin so it can be higher up and still start like off the screen. So to calculate this top margin, we can multiply the length of the stream by the font size, which is like 50. Let's see what this looks like. Much better. We're kind of trying to recreate the original matrix effect here. So let's quickly take a look at the movie clip. You can see that as the streams are falling down, after they get new padding each time, it's kind of like a new character appears, right? So like the characters in the stream remain the same, but a new one appears below and the one on top fades. So to achieve this, we kind of need to change the way that we 
currently have the stream, because right now it's just completely random characters on every re-render. So let's go ahead and move the stream to state. I made the stream fall slower, so it's easy to see, but you can see that since we made the stream constant, the characters in the stream don't change. What we actually want is that once we add padding to it, like every time it goes down one, we should add a new character to the bottom and remove the character from the top. So it looks like it's falling through characters. We can put this logic here. So when we're updating the padding, we can also update the stream. And what we're doing here might be kind of difficult to read because it's on one line, but basically we're going to get rid of the first character with the slice, and then we're going to add another character to the end. And let's see what this looks like. You can see now it looks like it's falling through, right? Like this bottom character is changing. The next effect I want to add is having some characters randomly glitch out. So currently all the characters stay the same, but in the movie version, sometimes they'll randomly change and they'll randomly flip to other characters. So how can we do that? Let's start by defining a constant. And this constant will be the probability for a character to change every time we re-render or when we add padding, which is basically the same thing at this point. So odds. This is a magic number I've kind of seen that looks good, but obviously you can just increase or decrease this to your preference. Now, when we change the stream, we're currently, where is it? Yeah, we're currently setting stream like this. And because all we're doing is getting rid of the first character in the stream here, it doesn't give us an opportunity to actually change the characters in the string. So we need a new function that lets us like mutate the stream into something new. Let me explain how this works. So the new stream we're going to just say is an empty array for now. And we're going to start a loop at index one, which basically means that we skip over the first element, which is the same as delete to get right. And then we generate a random number between zero and one. And we say, if this random number is less than the mutation odds, which is basically just saying, like, if we hit the odds, then push a random character into the stream. Otherwise, push the old character. And then at the end, we need to push a new character anyway to keep the stream length constant. And then we can return this new stream. So instead of this set stream being like this, we can actually change it to get mutated stream stream. And let's see how this looks now. Oh, a little bit of glitching there, yeah. I mean, I think this effect looks a lot better when there's many streams on the screen at once. Um, so yeah. By the way, quick JavaScript tip. So in this set stream function, we're passing a callback to it, which will give us the modified stream. But because we just have this callback argument and we just use it again inside our function, we can just change this to get mutated stream, just like that, because that's the callback and it saves a little bit of space. So we currently have one stream that's looking fine, but we want a lot of streams filling the whole screen, right? So how can we do this? And also, how many streams do we need to fill the screen? Like, how do we know how many streams we should return? Well, if you remember before, we set a fixed font size in range stream. And actually in CSS, the font size refers to the height of the character. But we need to know how wide each character is so we can know how many to uh, it will take to fill the screen up, right? So for this particular font, at this particular font size, the width is 26 pixels. Like again, this is a magic number, I'm sorry. And this is something I kind of determined um, through trial and error. I mean, it's not exactly 26 pixels, but if we assume it's that, then we can fit streams together quite nicely. So what we can do is we can have this stream count constant, right? And basically we just get the width of the window and divide it by the width of the stream. And then instead of returning one range stream, we can return stream count range streams. Now let's see how this looks. Okay, not what we intended. We need to change some CSS here. If we add display flex to this background container, then it should align all the streams um, so that they're not overlapping each other. Let's see how that looks. Cool, much better.
I just noticed when I looked at the recordings that this video actually looks quite like jagged and like laggy, but this is not how it looks on my screen. Uh, I think because I'm running the recording software and the code at the same time, my computer's getting a little bit overwhelmed. So I know this looks like complete garbage to you in the video right now, but if you don't have the recording software running, it looks better. But yeah, actually in the state of the code right now, the way that we're doing this and this animation is very hacky. This is not a good way to animate things. And so it's very computationally expensive because each one of these streams, you know, has that use interval hook and like it's adding padding to every single stream like at every single like 100 milliseconds period. So it's doing a lot at once. So there's definitely a lot of ways that you could make this a lot better. I'm going to leave the tutorial here, but there are a few extensions that I added to this. So one of the things I did was make the streams fall at different speeds and make them have different delays when they're falling down. So if you want to see the extensions and the final code, there'll be a link in the description to the GitHub repo. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you learned something or at least found it a little bit interesting. And please feel free to subscribe if you want to see more like this.